Hello everyone, uh, this is the first video in Writing 3014, and it's scientific writing taught here at the University of Utah. I'm going to be teaching the class. Uh, my name is Zach Chatterley, uh, as I say in this little blurb here on the beginning page or on the home page, you can call me Zach, you can call me Mr. Chatterley, I am okay with either one of those. Uh, I have an email address listed here, it is z.chatterley at utah.edu. We're going to be communicating a lot through Canvas, and the Canvas messaging system is fine. Uh, most of the interactions we have will come via Canvas, uh, both through responses that you're going to enter and then responses that I will enter on the various different interfaces uh, on assignments. Uh, with that said, there might be good reason to use email once in a while, so please keep in mind there is an email address posted here on this opening page, and I'm pretty good about responding to email quickly. Uh, I have an office, it's Linko3890. I have office hours, both physical and digital, meaning that I will have my computer open and logged on to Canvas during this time. Uh, we might end up needing to place a phone call or have a video conference or something along those lines. Uh, there's a class schedule. It is posted down here below week by week throughout the semester. And there is a syllabus. Uh, let's click on that. I promise I'm not going to torture you all by reading through the syllabus. I want to talk through certain points of it that are important and uh, want to explain well, certain expectations for the class. Uh, so a lot of the same information here, email address, office hours. Uh, there is a course description. I am probably not going to read it out loud uh, and there's a series of objectives. I am not going to read them out loud. Let me talk about what all of this says in slightly plainer language. This class is meant to help you in your future. If your future involves graduate school, this class hopefully will have numerous different lessons that will be useful and applicable to, to graduate school. If you are not planning on graduate school or on medical school and you, you just intend to uh, go immediately into the workplace, this class also hopefully will be useful for you. Uh, we're going to be covering various different documents that are common in scientific workplaces and in industry and uh, it, I've taught this class for a number of years and I do think it's practically useful for students. I've had several students email me or we've just kind of run into each other randomly and they've thanked me for some of the assignments in this class and some of the, the content because it has ended up helping them. Uh, there's a slight philosophical and ethical component to the class, but mostly this is a purely instructional class. It's kind of saying, here's how you write a memo, here's how you write a proposal, uh, here's how you write a research review, and all these other sorts of documents that function within the scientific community. Uh, I want to have a quick preview of the assignments you're going to be asked to do. Now, I am not going to get into detail on the small assignments right now. I should point out that a lot of the semester does involve those. Instead, I want to give an overview of the major assignments for the semester which are listed here. So the first one is a journal synopsis. Uh, we'll explain that quickly. I'm not going to get into de detail right now. It essentially is a, a review of a, a peer-reviewed journal that is relevant within your field. Um, that is sort of a preparatory assignment. It's going to take up the first week or two of class and it is leading us, well I don't know if it's leading us, but it precedes this. The SOP project is much bigger and it's going to take up much more of our time. So an SOP, or the the, the acronym SOP stands for Standard Operating Procedure. It's a set of instructions that uh, scientific workplaces use in order to make sure that people are doing consistent work within the lab. If you're a lab manager and you have 10 different people doing things differently, then you obviously have faulty results, and that's what SOPs are meant to alleviate. Uh, there are three different assignments to this overall project, and well, the main one and what it centers around is an SOP or an instructional guide. Now, let's talk about options for this because it's the whole reason I'm bringing it up right now. I want you to think about what you might be able to do with this. And we're going to be starting this project in about two weeks, so you have a little bit of time to think on it. The SOP should involve some sort of hands-on activity. It, it could be running a computer program, it could be collecting samples, it could be repairing a bicycle or repairing any piece of equipment or inspecting a piece of equipment. Uh, I've had students write good SOPs on checking in patients or on record keeping. Uh, the bottom line is it needs to be something in which a person does an activity and there needs to be a consistent standardization about it. Now not all of the the topics that students choose fit directly into the genre of SOP and I'm 
I'm f I'm fine with that. We can call this an instructional guide or a field guide if it, if it fits the the goals better. But the bottom line is it does need to involve something that somebody actually does. And importantly, it needs to be something that you can teach someone else to do. So sometimes students will want to pick something that's just completely impractical and that they obviously couldn't teach someone else to do. Uh, case in point, I had a student a couple semesters back that suggested an SOP on performing open heart surgery. That is not going to work for this assignment. Uh, it's got to be something that you could have a person work through and follow your instructions and assess how well they do. Uh, that, I suppose, brings up these other two assignments. Uh, the user test report is going to be a report on how well your SOP functions, meaning you are going to have somebody else work through the document, do the task that you describe, and you're going to assess how effective those uh, uh, instructions are. And the proposal is an assignment in which you essentially ask permission to implement this SOP of some authority figure. So if you're writing an SOP on, say, collecting specimens, you might write the proposal to a lab manager that is in the business of analyzing those specimens. Or you might write a, a proposal to a professor who teaches a class on collecting those specimens. Uh, we'll get to all of these throughout the semester. I am bringing it up right now to just kind of say, have this on the back of your mind. A major part of the semester is going to involve some hands-on project and you're going to describe how to do it. You're going to write instructions for it. The second half of the semester, starting around week 10, uh, so I guess a little bit less than half the semester, is going to be devoted to a literature review. This is going to be a, a fairly substantial peer-reviewed research project, meaning you are going to be getting articles from peer-reviewed journals. You can study anything you want to study so long as it is legitimate science. Uh, I've had a few students want to pick something that would fill, fall into the category of pseudoscience. Uh, for instance, I had a student uh, a while back that wanted to write about how vaccines cause autism, and I gave a firm no to that student. Now, that is rare. I hardly ever say no. Almost always, I'm going to say, yeah, that sounds good. Go pursue it. Pretty much any legitimate scientific topic is going to be getting publications within peer-reviewed journals. And so you really can study whatever you want to study. I also should note that I've occasionally had students who are not hard science majors and they've ended up doing something that is uh, related to their field, not to the hard sciences, and that's generally fine. If you're a psychology major or a sociology major, for instance, you're fine. You can still complete the assignment and more or less do exactly what everybody else in the class is doing with this literature review. Uh, we'll get to that throughout the semester, or we'll get to that later in the semester, rather. Uh, small assignments. So let's talk about this quickly. There are going to be a lot of them. Uh, they are, in many cases, taking the place of the face-to-face -face interaction that normally happens within a class. Uh, a lot of the discussions where I would normally, you know, talk and try to host a, a conversation within a class, they are going to be carried off, or the ideas from those discussions are going to be carried off through these small assignments. Some of them will involve talking to other students. Some of them will be uh, just responding to a reading, and I will be the only one reading that. Uh, we're going to be doing these constantly throughout the semester. I shouldn't overplay it. I mean, by constantly, I mean somewhere between two and four a week. Uh, we should talk for a moment about the pace of the class. Uh, it is not a pure go-at-your-own-pace sort of class. Uh, it is built around a Monday and Wednesday schedule. Now, of course, we do not physically meet on Mondays and Wednesdays, uh, but many of the assignments are posted as being due on Monday, Wednesday, or in some cases, I'll maybe knock it back to Friday. Uh, if the Monday schedule does not work for you, you are expected to work just a little bit ahead. Uh, for instance, you know, do the work on 
uh, uh, Saturday or Sunday that's coming on, up on Monday. Um, please be highly aware this is not a pure work at your own pace class. Uh, we are doing assignments weekly. There are deadlines and you do need to make a, a habit of, of meeting them. This is not the sort of thing that you can just wait until you have you know a, a given amount of time and then make up three weeks of work. Like we need to stay on, on task throughout the semester. Uh, I have a quick note on the Canvas site. Uh, it says something along these lines. I have been teaching 3014 for a number of years and that I've got the content pretty well dialed in for this class. However, converting all of that to a website format is time consuming and I am still not quite done. Uh, the first nine to 10 weeks of the class are pretty solid. Uh, the last five or six weeks of the class still need some work and there might be a few inconsistencies along the way. If you notice something that seems inconsistent, like say there's a due date that you're, is, is inconsistent or there's a link that is broken or there's something that's just generally confusing, please let me know that. I will uh, make a point of trying to fix that. And again, you can let me know that with a Canvas message from the inbox over here, or you can email me. Either one is fine. Let's click on pages and it will take us to the home page. It's worth noting that I can also get here just by clicking on home. Either one will take you to the same place. If I scroll down, then I've got the weeks for the entire semester laid out. Let's go to week number one because that's where we are. So it'll start with a series of objectives. These are often quite short. Uh, sometimes I will add a statement following it, kind of like elaborating on it, but these are meant to be very concise just to kind of say, here's what we're doing this, this given week. Then there is a series of uh, things scheduled for Monday and a series of things scheduled for Wednesday. Now, again, this is a little bit loose. Uh, for instance, this response to Carolyn Miller, a human humanistic rationale for technical writing is not due until Friday. Uh, I am still posting it as like an activity for Monday. I gotta get rid of that bullet point there. Uh, I'm still posting it as an activity for Monday because I want students to, you know, kind of recognize you should be working in this class. Now let's click on both of these uh, little assignments and talk about what they are. So if I click on, tell me who you are. It's going to bring up uh, an assignment and I can go directly, or I should say you can go directly to submit assignment, but please stop and don't do that immediately. I want you to read through the descriptions. A lot of the content that we normally would cover in a face-to-face -face class is posted here in the assignments. And if you're skipping past it, you're gonna be missing a lot of the stuff that's important for the class. I have uh, designed this in such a way that like right when you get to the assignment, there is all sorts of stuff kind of explaining, here's what I'm asking to do specifically, and here are different things that you think should think about as you do the, this assignment. So please do not skip these. Uh, let's back out real quickly and go to the other one. Uh, I should say this, tell me who you are. I've just got a series of questions here. I'm asking, you know, what major you were, you were in and what your interests are. And I'm uh, trying to, you know, kind of see if uh, people are, are active in the class. Uh, the other assignment, uh, Carolyn Miller's Humanistic humanistic rationale for technical writing. If we click on that, it has, uh, again, a fairly lengthy description. Now, some of these are a little bit shorter, but most of them do kind of look like this. And again, all of this text right here is meaning to substitute for the sort of work that we would normally do in the classroom. I am asking you to read this. Uh, I should point out that it is definitely a difficult read. Uh, you might have a hard time following parts of it, and that is completely fine. It's, and I should also point out that this uh, reading by Carolyn Miller does not represent most of the stuff you're going to encounter in this class. Uh, I put it up front partly to have a contextual conversation about what sorts of goals this class ought to have, and I also really like students to engage with this particular passage from Carolyn Miller. So this is out of context here, but it's a 
specific passage that I've copied and pasted out of the essay, and I want you to respond to it. Uh, I want to get, get your thoughts on this matter. Uh, I've had some students, I should say, that have uh, vehemently disagreed with Carolyn Miller. I've had other students quite like her, and if there's something that gets that much of a reaction from students, to me, that's an incentive to keep it on the syllabus. Uh, so this is something I'm going to be asking you to do by Friday. Uh, now, I should say, this says resubmit because I was kind of testing this out in student view and I already submitted something, but that's worth noting as well. If I click on resubmit, then I can uh, submit this and let's see, second submission. And this will overwrite the initial uh, response uh, that I wrote. So if you feel like you wrote something that was not quite on, then you can resubmit it. If you're doing this after the due date for the assignment, that's going to create problems. It's going to say that uh, it was late or if it's locked, it won't accept it. But uh, what I'm saying is you can resubmit if you feel like you didn't quite get things right the, the first time through. So uh, this is a rich text editor. Most students just kind of type out the text. There is a word count down here and generally I have given a word word count guideline for, for all the, the small assignments throughout the semester. Uh, you can put in links. You can mess around with font and, and format if you want. Uh, you definitely don't have to, but sometimes that can be kind of cool or, or creative. Um, and we click on submit assignment and it will give me a little receipt right here, so to speak. And that's telling me I have submitted uh, this assignment, so we're good. Uh, that assignment has been submitted. I see that and you see that, so you can rest assured that I did get that assignment. Uh, so right now I'm going to stop talking. I, I want you to play around with the class. I want you to uh, look at the interface. And again, the main way to access content is to go to the pages. Uh, we can go to uh, you know week one, week two, week three. Uh, it's worth noting that weeks 11 through 16 uh, are still under construction. They will be posted soon. Uh, if not by the time class starts, then definitely within that first week uh, we'll have those posted. Um, oh, we should take note of this too. So there's always going to be this little sort of stream of upcoming activities and uh, assignments on the right hand column. Uh, you're probably familiar with this if you've used Canvas before, uh, pay attention to that. If you have questions about any of this, again, you can get hold of me through email, z.chatterly at utah.edu, or Canvas message is fine. Either one is great. Uh, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy the class, and I look forward to getting to know you all. I'll see you next time.